Secondary operations for injection molding are the most critical to your assembly function and your product's overall cosmetic appearance. I'm Cameron Moore, the Director of Overseas Manufacturing at Fictive. I've learned a great deal living in China, working with manufacturers for over 13 years, and I've seen too many times where secondary operations be a secondary consideration to part design. Today, we will review the main types of secondary operations and how best design for them and manage them. Heat seeking inserts are installed by pressing the insert into a mounting hole with a thermal press to melt the plastic surrounding the insert. The majority of the time they are threaded or knurled to give better strength to the screw assembly. There's three important management tips with heat staked inserts. Firstly, not all the time inserts in the US are available in China. So if the MOQ is lower or the tooling lead time is faster, have discussions prior to and be open to using equivalents. Secondly, since the inserts are installed by melting in the plastic, the tolerances from the processes tend to be relatively open. If the needed tolerance of the depth and the position of the insert need to be tighter than 0.3 mm, best have discussions prior on how to have that achieved. Lastly, best to determine the pullout force needed for these inserts so QC can be properly performed. Painting parts as a secondary operation may help with overall cosmetics, UV resistance, wear, and chemical resistance. Before starting painting, determine the color and provide either a Pantone or RAL number, and determine the color tolerance in a Delta E number. Decide if overspray is acceptable or not. If not, provide a drawing showing surfaces that need to be masked. For the painting process, ask if the parts are going to be painted in a painting booth and if the booth is environmentally controlled from the outside air. Deionizing guns help aid in the paint adherence. For a QC consideration, determine if a simple alcohol or scotch tape test is sufficient. Screen and pad printing is a secondary operation used to apply logos or writing onto the plastic parts. Firstly, it's important to provide a one-to-one -one size scale Adobe Illustrator file for the printed graphic, as that's needed to make the screen or the rubber pad. Secondly, provide 2D drawings, giving the location and tolerances of the print. If the location tolerances are greater than 0.3 mm, again, highlight and discuss prior to kicking the project off. Automatic printing machines are more consistent for aesthetics and the location than manually applying the printing. Determine if a simple alcohol or scotch tape test is sufficient for checking the adherence and communicate that with your factory. These secondary operations described are just three of the many offered by Fictive, but typically are the most popular and in demand. Fictive also offers ultrasonic welding, insert molding, and light assembly. Controlling the consistency of the quality can be a challenge when secondary operations are involved. Many times parts are molded in one facility and secondary operations are performed at second or even a third facility. That creates risk as to which party is responsible for any non-conformances. At Fictive, one of our strengths is through our distribution network of suppliers, we place tooling work with secondary operations at manufacturing partners that can do these operations all in-house, all under one roof. It helps ensure the entire process is more efficient and the quality is consistent. If you have other injection molding questions or challenges you'd like me to take on, please list them in the comments below and I'll look to answer them in the future. Be sure to subscribe because we'll be giving helpful tips in the future so that your tooling goes smoothly and successfully.